the 8532nd meeting of the Security Council is called to order. The provisional agenda for this meeting is the situation in the Middle East, including the Palestinian question. The agenda is adopted. I shall now make a statement in my capacity as the Minister for Foreign Affairs of Indonesia. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, first of all, I would like to convey my appreciation and thanks to the Special Coordinator Nadinov and Commissioner Brian Bull for your briefing. Colleagues, last January, in this chamber, I made a statement to the Council on this very agenda. Among others, I underlined that Palestinian question defined the credibility of the Council. Unfortunately, nothing has improved since then, if not even deteriorated. Early this month, we have seen yet another wave of violence in Gaza, resulting in at least 29 casualties from both sides. I appreciate the role of the Secretariat and Egypt to de-escalate the situation. However, we are concerned that the construction of illegal settlement in West Bank persists, and it has become de facto annexation. And it is why Indonesia, quite together with South Africa organized an area formula meeting on this issue two weeks ago. We have also seen the closure of temporary international presence in Hebron. We have seen also the increasingly limited resources and capacity for humanitarian assistance. There is an urgent need to revive the political will of all parties to work toward a credible peace plan and improve the humanitarian condition on the ground. In this regard, there are a number of bottom line points that I wish to reach. First, the protection of the Palestinian civilian. Let me recall the report of the Independent Commission of Inquiry, February this year. The report shows the use of extreme violence by occupying forward, including toward journalists, medical personnel, and disabled. And it is clearly against the basic principle of human rights. It justifies our call that we have no option, but it provides international protection for the Palestinian civilian. Second, the need to address the humanitarian condition. Improving economic and social situation is crucial. Not only is this a matter of fundamental right, but it will also prevent needless violence. UN Roa is again confronted with another year of crisis. We commend the work of all staff of UN Roa we have been, who have been instrumental despite difficult security and financial situation. We commend also to those who have stepped up their contribution to support their programs. And rest assured, Indonesia is fully committed to do so. And thirdly, the peace process must be resumed. The cycle of violence must be ended. All sides must show maximum restraint and be willing to engage in a meaningful dialogue. Therefore, there is an urgent need for a credible process that allows all relevant parties to engage on equal footing, to work toward an acceptable peace plan. A fresh perspective should not mean abandoning internationally agreed parameters on this issue. For Indonesia, no alternative to two-state solution. Finally, Excellencies, the world has seen enough evidence on how protected conflicts in the Middle East have serious repercussions on peace and stability in many other parts of the world. This is indeed an issue of the global consequences. Therefore, the Security Council must make real progress on this issue, particularly on the Palestinian question, the longest item in the Security Council agenda. All parties must exercise maximum restraint and continue working with good faith to move the peace process forward by upholding 
of the principle of multilateralism through dialogue and negotiation so that we can arrive at our common goal, a genuine and lasting peace. I thank you.